Hello there and welcome back to another Q&A on the Master Moldy channel. You've asked me questions that you want to know about the channel, about Lego, and I have compiled as many of them as I could find. If you do have any other questions I haven't answered, let me know down in the comments. When we get a few more, I'll do another one. However long it takes, it's possibly even another three months time. It's been three months since the last Q&A went up and this is only Q&A number three here on the channel. So definitely go back, watch the other two if you haven't already. Our very first question comes from one of the members, George. If you don't know about the membership, check it out through the join button, only 99p. You get access to our Discord where we talk about rumours, leaks and so, so much more. We even have a memes channel over there which is really fun. George asks, how did you come up with your YouTube name? Well, I feel like I didn't come up with the name because for a long time on social media I was on TikTok before YouTube which many people might not notice and I rarely post to TikTok now. I went by the name Moldy because it was a name that was used by one of my very old school friends as a play on my actual name, which you won't be finding out in this video, but I just kept it with me and it's what everyone calls me now. No one actually uses my real name. Everyone just calls me Moldy. And then when I went over to YouTube, I started making Star Wars videos before Lego. And I know some of you have even stuck around from that period and I adopted Master Moldy. I really like the alliteration Stanley uses for Marvel characters and it makes it easy to remember the name. I think it also flows off the tongue very, very nicely. So I like the name Master Moldy. It fit in with Star Wars and now we're into Lego. You get Master Builders. So Master Moldy, Master Moldy as in Jedi Master Moldy, Master Moldy as in Master Builder Moldy. It still works. So I kept that name and I don't see myself ever changing it because again, I really like the alliteration. If you've been watching the Lego Star Wars City update, you'll know we've got Tatooine Tower, we've got Naboo Neighborhood, and at the minute between you and me, I haven't revealed this on this series, I'm currently working on Coruscant Condo as well, which is gonna be the next tower. So that is how I come up with my YouTube name. I took a nickname and just whacked Master in front of it for Jedi Master, and now it's used for Master Builder. Next up, Squirtle asks, where did I get the hexagonal displays in the background. These ones that hold my clone troopers. Most of these clone troopers are either customs or Lego. And you know where I got the Lego ones from, but I actually got all the customs from Filoni clones. Now for the display itself, I have completely 3D printed these from scratch. I have a 3D printer, which again, if you do want to become a member, we do have a members board here and I will 3D print you a personalized tile with your name on, which does look really, really cool on the Master Moldy Members Board, which again, keeping up with that alliteration, but I've 3D printed this, so I'm unable to sell them. There is someone else that has uploaded the design for these. You fit a three by four minifigure CMF base plate in them, and that allows you to clip your minifigures to Lego plates. Though I know a lot of people worry about clipping minifigures down. You can also attach that black display side panel piece to your minifigures, which is a preferred piece for a lot of people, or even just tile off the floor with two two by three tiles and stand your minifigures on the tiles. I've been asked this so, so much, and I'm pretty sure this has featured in a previous Q&A, but it does look really cool and colorful, and it's something that LEGO really are missing out on. I think at the minute you can get red displays, blue displays, and I think they even released tan ones for the Harry Potter line. Wow. But I'd really like to see something this colorful and also something modular, a brick building system similar to their two by eight minifigure displays that you can stack on, hang on the wall and connect these because this is only hanging on by two points. Two of these hexagons are connected to the wall and the rest of them are just connected to them two hexagons. It really is that simple, but it looks so great. Our next question is, which big projects will you be trying later? Will I be trying later? The question is towards me. I've got a few big projects in the works, of course. When we hit 10K, I'm gonna be building a UCS set. There's been a few shouts for the UCS Razor Crest, which I think is a really, really sleek model. And with Mando coming out next year, if we can hit 10K around the time that Mando comes out, that's gonna be an amazing set to build. Even if we hit it sooner, I'd love to build that. And I think that'd be a great project to build live as well with all of you able to watch the process because 
some of the details in UCS sets really are cool and I'm not going to be able to show them all off with the finished model. Of course, on top of that, with 100k subscribers, we're building a minifigure scale Star Destroyer. It's a big promise, but I've got plenty of time to figure out how we're going to do that. And I actually want to be starting that soon. I want to take the, I think I might have said this before, I want to take the Star Destroyer playset and turn that into a section of the Star Destroyer so we can actually use the playset to start building the Star Destroyer. Of course, 100k subs is going to be quite a bit away. We've got a few other projects I want to tackle soon, like a big Star Wars mock down here that I built the AV7 turret for. And it's going to be a little bit of time because I am going to be busy over the next few weeks, but hopefully I can chip away at that. We've also got the Minecraft display, which I recently rebuilt my minifigure display stand for my Lego Star Wars minifigures just below the LED one here. And I've got quite a few. I feel like these are going to go very, very quickly, but I've got a decent amount of bricks that I can use to fill the terrain in and just build it up at the back for the most part. So hopefully I can start that soon. We would like to do something with a Harry Potter section and build a somewhat scaled down Hogwarts that is still modular and has all the different rooms in. Perhaps we can tackle that at some point. We are currently working on the Lego City. I think part 30 is coming out this week, which has been a long time in the making. As I say, over a year spent on the Lego City. So we do have quite a few big projects coming up. And also next year for Revenge of the Sith, I'd love to build a giant Revenge of the Sith diorama. As I said, I'm working on doing a city-sized diorama at the minute from the Clone Wars. To do one for Revenge of the Sith next year, I don't know if I will do Mustafar. I'm looking at doing the Jedi Temple, so plenty of big projects. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on any of them, and I'm really looking forward to what the future holds for big projects on this channel. Dirk asks if my Bricklink store is already up, and if so, will I be selling Grievous, the white version of Grievous, that came in, I think, only two sets. One of which was the Speed Up with Windu, which was a very funny set to be getting. And then the other one was Grievous' Starfighter, which also comes with the exclusive 212 Airborne and wrongly detailed Kenobi minifigure with the Mustafar torso and legs. And for the first part, yes, my Bricklink store is up already. I'm actually waiting to add the Star Wars magazine with Sabine and the 212 Trooper. This is taking a lot longer than I expected. I hope to have them up by now so I could announce it for the video, but they are still waiting. I have made sure they are all protected so that no damage can come to the magazines. They will be up as soon as I can, but we've just got to wait for Bricklink to add it on their end. As for White Grievous, I didn't realise Grievous goes for so much. I think it was like 15, 20 plus quid, and that was what it starts at. So Eventually, when the Brickling store is making some money, I would definitely like to do requests such as this where I buy the parts for a minifigure and can sell them to you because especially when you're purchasing things on Bricklink, for the most part, arms will come from not only one seller, but I was finding for Grievous specifically, all the parts come from a bunch of different countries. And if you're not building a massive collection like mine behind me and all my minifigures, I've still got to get so many parts from that's a lot of delivery just to get an arm from here, another arm from here, legs from here, and then the head from here. So I would love to stock up a few of these older minifigures because Grievous is so, so cool. And especially some of the droid parts and stuff like that. I am looking into it, but first off, let's get these magazines sold. We do have a few parts in the Bricklink store, which I realise might not be as interesting for non-Star Wars fans. But I'm hoping to get some Star Wars sets on cheap later this year, add them to it and just bulk up all the minifigures and parts we are selling. So if you'd like to see more minifigures like Grievous, like Clone Troopers, do let me know down in the comments and I can try to make that possible. And I definitely like the idea of buying minifigure parts and selling them back to you as their full complete minifigures because it just makes it so much easier for you to get minifigures you need. Not many people are actually doing it on Bricklink because it's really not cost effective. But as it's only a side project for me, I'd love to do that and Keep an eye out, maybe in the next few months you'll see a few Grievouses up there, but I will let you know. And if you want to know first about any of these things, I will be adding a channel over on Discord to update you on what I'm adding to the Bricklink store when it's added. Regior, again, I'm very sorry if I mispronounce any of your names, has asked if I can recommend any UK custom sellers because 
they don't want to pay for shipping from the US. And I know it's a similar thing from other countries not wanting to get overseas shipping because that definitely racks up. If you're spending a lot on custom minifigures, not necessarily expensive minifigures, but if you're going to be spending a lot, you don't really want to have the budget for shipping on top of that. And it is a problem within the UK as well. Some companies are charging five plus pounds for shipping when it's not going to cost that much, no matter how big the small parcel is going to end up. And I can actually recommend two custom sellers. The first and probably the best for army building is going to be Filoni clones. You've probably already heard this, so I will try and keep this short and sweet. But the custom clones are really, really cool. And there are occasionally other minifigures. You've seen my custom Clone Wars Kenobi minifigure. You've seen a replica of Lego's own Zeb Aurelius minifigure. And I've also got a Yavin Ceremony Leia. I've got a minifig Scout R2-D2. These are all minifigures you can get from Filoni clones. So definitely go check them out over on Whatnot. And if you want to know more, I'll leave a video tagged on screen now and on the end for you to check out all the custom clones I got and the whole process because it's not like your typical custom sellers. As for official Lego pieces, I know a lot of people like some of the bigger clone customs. Personally, I'm a big fan of Firestar's custom printed arms rather than custom minifigures. I think some of the best minifigures you can get for price with official Lego pieces come from official Lego sets. And it does sound like it makes sense. There's just no way other companies are able to buy Lego pieces and sell them cheaper than Lego because they are also paying the Lego price. So if you do want to stock up on some of your 501st, your shiny phase two, your Coruscant Guard, your 212, and all the other clone minifigures that are available now, I think the fighter tank has retired, but you could probably pick that up in a few stores. Definitely check out Firestar Toys. Again, I do have a discount code that gets you like 10% off in my link tree. But I don't get paid by either one to advertise their products. They're just both really, really cool and definitely worth a check out if you are in the UK. I also have to mention if you are looking for GCC custom clones, someone did also comment about Blue Harvest Bricks. So if you've got the money to splash on expensive clones, you might as well check them out as well. We have a question from Billy who asked, what is my favorite? favorite other Lego franchise. So other being, aside from Star Wars, most of the things we do here on the channel are Star Wars. And as I said, I did come from being a Star Wars YouTube channel. So it makes sense that I gravitate more towards Star Wars. But behind me, we have a Minecraft display, which has been neglected. There will be a big change on that. We've got a Harry Potter display as well. I do have a whole display for my Marvel minifigures. And I have a few other themes, like a lot of the Disney ones. We have the odd Yoshi from Mario. We have a few Sonic figures, which I am aiming to collect all the Sonic figures because I used to love one of the old games. It was Sonic Chronicles Dark Brotherhood, I believe, on the DS. And I played that so, so much. It was probably my most played game growing up until Minecraft took over. But if I had to pick one alongside Star Wars, I think it would probably have to be Marvel out of all of them. Minecraft have probably the better sets than Marvel, but I do like the joint Marvel and Spider-Man. When it comes to Spider-Man, Marvel do own the Lego side of it. And I'm not quite sure exactly why that is because on screen, Sony have the rights, but Marvel seem to own all the other things, including action figures, Lego and even Funkos, all the toys seem to be licensed through Marvel. My second favourite Lego franchise is Marvel, but I also have to give a massive shout out to the Lego Creator line. I'm a big fan of the Creator line. We have the dragon, we have the dinosaur, little sets, and it's mainly the little ones, not the buildings, but the little animals I really like the look of. Arc Trooper Fives has two questions. First off, can I do a live stream Q&A so they can ask questions and get a fast response, which I think is an amazing idea, by the way. And do I know any Lego resellers in the UK or near London? I don't really know any stores and it's definitely something I'd like to get into in the future. So keep an eye out. Perhaps I can do a video dedicated to finding some cheap Lego resellers in London. I assume this is for old and retired sets, though. I'll be completely honest, I think your best bet is probably having a look on Amazon because there are so many different resellers on there and because they're all on the one marketplace, the prices tend to be pretty competitive. I know at the minute the Inquisitor Scythe is only £120 on there. You've got the Justifier as well, 
£120. And I know this because these are all sets that I've considered picking up in the past. So maybe one day you'll see them reviewed on the channel. And the old Advent from 2022 is £60. However, it's a lot cheaper on Bricklink. So sometimes your best bet is having a look for the sealed set on Bricklink. Now back to the first question about a live stream Q&A. I definitely will be doing a lot of live streams in the future. That was a tongue twister when you say it so fast. But right now, because I'm living in a house with other people, it makes it quite hard to do it. And not to mention the Lego room as it stands isn't actually a Lego room. This is still a bedroom. I've got my bed in the other side of the room. So I am sharing this with my fiance. When we move out and I can move this Lego section of the room into its own office, I fear I will be live streaming absolutely everything. I'm talking building sets, probably even doing some exclusive live streams just to sit down and talk with members. And yes, of course, Q and A's. I think every stream will be a building stream, but also a Q and A because anyone can pop in, ask a question, get an answer, and we can continue building the set we are building or breaking down a giant mock or sorting Lego. I am looking forward to doing a lot of live streams, but right now I'm struggling to get the time to do the video. So it's gonna be very hard to do a live stream. That being said, I'm aiming to do a live stream for 10K subs. So hopefully we can work something out for that and I can break that down. I'm not expecting to build a UCS set in a few hours in one sitting, though I'm sure if I put my mind to it, I could definitely do like a 12 hour build stream to get it all done. But hopefully we could do a live stream building that set. So if you do wanna see a live stream sooner rather than later, make sure you are subscribed so we can hit 10K and Right now, the chances are we'll be building the UCS Razor Crest. So if you would like to see that again, be sure to subscribe, share the video, get everyone subscribing to the channel so we can hit 10K as quickly as possible. Dirk's also got another question, which is slightly older. Did I ever think about becoming a part of the LEGO Ambassador Network? Now, I did apply, I think the last cutoff was at the end of March. I applied probably about an hour or so before the cut off. And for some reason, my application just didn't make it into the poll. I didn't get any reply because it wasn't actually submitted. So if you are submitting an application to LAN or to become part of the LEGO Ambassador Network, I definitely recommend getting it in early. That being said though, I have updated it for this video over a month before the cut off at the end of September. So Sometime in November when I have a response, I will let you know if I'm in or not. Perhaps that would be a good time to do another Q&A video. So I can let you know my journey through it. Perhaps you could even make its own video if you're interested in seeing that. But I have applied to become a part of LAN and hopefully with how quickly this channel's growing, it won't be long before we get in. I know it's a lot of work, but I'm really looking forward to getting the information early because Lego's social media team and what they actually put out is very last minute when instead of me making a video about it, you're best off just following an official Lego account. But I will be trying to bounce everything from Lego through this channel because not everything Lego posts is going to be relevant to you. For instance, the recent release of the Peppa Pig Duplo themes and all of the other themes aimed at a younger audience. Not to mention how many shorts they post here on YouTube it's enough to keep up with my own channel. But yes, I have applied to become a part of LAN and I am crossing my fingers. I know there are a few other bigger channels that struggle to get in, but hopefully Lego see something they like and we can review some sets early because that would be really, really awesome. Closed Productions, nice name by the way, asked, if you could have one Star Wars Rebel set to be made, what would it be? I've been thinking about this and I think for Rebels, it's got to be a UCS ghost ship. I'm surprised they haven't tapped into that yet, considering we've got a ghost playset, so it'll probably be a few years before we get another one. I think, actually, the ghost could retire next year or the year after. So if 26, 27, we got a ghost UCS set, that would be really cool. This year, we've got the alleged Jubbers Salvage coming out. That's meant to be coming out in about a month and a week's time. So we should be getting some news on whatever that UCS set is soon. Next year is going to be a prequel era set, which is good with Revenge of the Sith. We might get a UCS Palpatine shuttles or perhaps even another UCS Jedi Inceptor. We've got the UCS Venator already. We could get a UCS 
separatist ship like the Invisible Hand to go along with it, that would be really, really cool alongside the UCS Veneta or something like a UCS Plos Starfighter, which is a bit... But then the following year, we're back to sort of original trilogy, which I'd love to see a 2026 UCS Ghost. So that is definitely going to be the one. I'm wanting Hera, Zeb, Ezra, Chopper, Kanan, Sabine... And they could probably even throw in another minifigure like a Rebels Ahsoka. Though, let's not get too carried away. Roger asked if I think LEGO will ever give us an official clone commando minifigure. Like the custom I have just on my display down here at the corner. And I really, really hope we get a battle pack. There are so many different clone types of minifigures that we still need to get we haven't even got an accurate phase one clone pilot so i'd love to see a clone commando battle pack though i really think if they are going to do a clone commando battle pack it will probably be similar to the battlefront battle pack and it will coincide with i think they've just re-released the delta squad game for the switch so it would probably be something like that and they give us the delta squad in a battle pack for minifigures, it does make a bit of sense, but I would still love to see a Clone Commando. I'm still hoping we get some sort of Rogue Class Shuttle from Bad Batch Season 3. Bunch of named clones, including Wolf, Wolf Pack. We can get a Clone Commando with that. We can even get like Samson, Greer, and some of the lesser known named clones from that series. The next question is, what was my first LEGO Star Wars minifigure? And I do have a whole video reviewing this set. It's still built today, my very first set, and this is the actual set, excluding one sticker which I needed to replace at some point, is this Clone Walker Battle Pack from 2009. And that is why, to me, it's one of the best LEGO sets that has ever come from the Star Wars theme. I know people consider this anyway, even having not been collecting LEGO at the time or having collected LEGO since the 90s. This is definitely still one of my favorite sets, and that means my very first minifigure is actually the clone troopers that pilot it. We get three of these regular phase one clone troopers and a bunch of accessories to customize them with. And then we also get a gunner in the set, which was really cool to get. I have two gunners, one from this, one from parting out the Veneta. But I still think these phase one clone troopers really can't be beat. They are the same style as the Lego Star Wars 3, the Clone Wars game, which I played so much of when I was young and mastered the whole flying system, which is probably the hardest from any of the Lego Star Wars games. When I originally had this set, I did swap all the arms out and gave them red arms, and it was my first custom minifigure, the first Star Wars set I got, and I broke the minifigures apart and stole red arms from my Lego City minifigures, or wherever I got the red arms from at the time, making them look like the clones from the pilot of the Clone Wars Season 1, Episode 1, Ambush, where Yoda has the three clone troopers from the... I can't remember what legion they are from now, but it's Pons Jek, who later joins the 41st and is with Yoda on Revenge of the Sith. So I'm hoping to get another minifigure of him released next year by LEGO. But these are my very first minifigures. And yes, they are still in pretty good quality, actually. I don't think there's any torso cracks. The legs aren't cracked. And these have seen so many studs. So it just goes to show that not all minifigures placed on studs are going to crack. My fiance asked what inspired me to create my channel, which is a really funny question because it was actually her that inspired me to start doing Star Wars videos. So I was for a time recording Funko unboxing and showing off all the Funko Pops that I got, all Star Wars, of course, over on TikTok. And then I started covering news and following other Star Wars news channels. And it was really fun talking about what new was coming from Star Wars. But Star Wars was going through a funny time around the time of Book of Boba releasing this was. So I transitioned to doing fan theories and other Star Wars content. And my fiance inspired me to post longer videos over on YouTube. So I started that, predicted the finale, which I think was my very first video here on the channel, which they're all unlisted now. Kira, the new owner of the Darksaber, gets caught off guard right at that moment. Boba busts down the door, similar to how we see him in season two of The Mandalorian. He's unstoppable. And of course, eventually, that sort of rolled into LEGO. It made sense when I was covering Star Wars that I'd also be covering LEGO because I'm a massive LEGO fan and have been for the last 15 plus years. Excluding that little period with the Rebels, Solo, Rogue One sets that I really wish I picked up and missed out on because I was going through my 
dark times of Lego as everyone seems to have. And like I said earlier in the video, Jedi Master become Master Builder and we just snowballed into Lego. Lego was so much more fun because it's a lot more of a positive community. I always talk about my community here on YouTube. We're a part of the bigger Lego community, which really isn't a thing when covering Star Wars news and Star Wars fan fictions and everything else we used to do on the channel. A few of it has rolled over into Lego, like building what ifs for series like we did with the Bad Batch. I would like to do that for a future Star Wars show or movie. We'll probably do something very similar building up to the Mandalorian and Grogu movie that comes out in 2026, which I might have said earlier in the video comes out next year. Originally we were hoping for it, but it recently got announced for two years of time. So there'll be a few more what ifs on the channel, but eventually it just rolled into building Lego mocks and reviewing Lego sets. And the channel really did boom when I started covering Lego content. So I stuck with it and I've been enjoying it ever since. Dirk's back with another question. Am I planning on visiting any Lego conventions in the Netherlands? I would love to visit Lego conventions all over the world. I haven't visited a strictly Lego convention. I went to a convention recently that had a few different Lego stalls and that was quite cool. But I'd really love to go to a few Lego conventions. This year I've been taking note of all the ones happening here in the UK, mainly around London area. And next year I have a list. I think I've got about four or five throughout the start of the year that I will be heading to. So hopefully I really enjoy those and can start branching out into other European conventions because that'd be really cool traveling Europe to see all these different Lego conventions and meeting all of you that I'm not going to bump into day to day. Well, at least not unless you're going for a really long walk. And they also asked if so which. Now, this is the problem with other conventions. I have no idea what conventions are going on in the UK, let alone other European countries, let alone the world. Of course, I know about a few big ones over in America because they're all over the YouTube recommended whenever they are happening. And I think some of them would be the big goal. But I also think there are so many in the UK. I'd love to go to Manchester as well one year because I think that's the biggest one in the UK and one of the biggest in Europe. So I'm going to have to do my homework for this. I'm jotting down all the ones that I see in the UK. And then in a few years time, I do hope that I could go across Europe to different conventions. It doesn't really matter how big they are, just to see the different communities within the wider LEGO fan base. So I can't make no promises yet, but if there are a few different LEGO conventions near you, let me know down in the comments and hopefully in a few years time, if they're still up and running, I might be able to visit a few and see all of you at them. Billy also asked, when was I first introduced into LEGO? So I went over to Brickset, which I have registered all my LEGO Star Wars sets to try and find some of the old sets I remember building and still have parts of to this day. And of course, for Star Wars, that's back in 2009. But I know I was collecting Lego before that. So I had a look at other sets I got, like this Lego Technic Dirt Bike 8291, which came out January 2008. So chances are I probably got that for my birthday that year. And there was another Technic vehicle I remember also getting, which is this Quad Bike 8262 but I got both of them together and this didn't come out till January 09. So it was probably 2009 I got both of them set. And for other themes, Power Miners as well, I remember getting the full first wave besides one of the sets. Over time, of course, I didn't get all of them on the same day. But if I got the Technic Bikes on my birthday, this would have been even later in 2009. And the Star Wars set I got was shortly after my birthday that yeah, so it weren't too long after the set's release. So it can't have been the Power Miner set either. There are a few poly bags I remember getting, such as the Pharaoh Quest Desert Rover, but that didn't come out until 2011. We've also got the Wreck Raider from the Lego Atlantis theme, which was really, really cool. I really like the submarine ride at Legoland, but again, that came out 2010. We've got this Lego Creator poly bag as well, which is just simply titled Lion 78. Seven, two. And this came out in 2007 and I remember building this one. So 2007 is before 2009. This in fact retired the day before the Clone Walker Battle Pack came out. So this is looking very, very promising here. And I also remember this small car, which I still have the minifigure standing in my Lego City. But again, 2010, 2007 when Lego Creator was at the top of the list until I remembered about the Speed Racers, the Lego Racers, I think they were the Turbo series. But a lot of these came in little 
plastic containers that you pop off the top that was shaped like a wheel and you could fold out a mat. But I think the early ones did come in boxes or there was something different I remember about the earlier cars. But me and my brother had most of these between us. So I remembered half of these and I've still got a lot of the pieces from the first wave of these Lego racers, which came out in 2005. Now again, there's no saying that I would have got these in 2005. I would have been four at the time. Definitely a year, year and a half later in 2006, I was probably playing with these alongside the Hot Wheels as well, because I used to love them growing up. I have a little collection of Hot Wheels behind me if you are interested. I'll flash them up on screen as well. Star Wars and Mario Kart, which me and my fiance have both collected. But I remember these Lego racers. They were so much fun. I could definitely try and part out a few of these, but they are very small and simple compared to Lego sets I'm building nowadays. So what got me into official Lego bricks has to be this Lego Racers line, though I was also getting a few compatible Lego sets as well. So I guess I was introduced to Lego 19 years ago, over 19 years ago possibly. We will never really know for sure because I don't think there's many images of me playing with Lego when I was young. But it does go back before Star Wars and I had watched Star Wars by the time I was four. I think around the time I was two I got introduced to Star Wars. Had no idea what was going on, but ended up really, really loving both Lego and Star Wars. So and perhaps that's why Lego Star Wars is the main theme that features throughout this channel. Now, last but not least, there are no more questions for the video, but I've been told that I look like a few different YouTubers. So I want to throw these out there. Perhaps you don't see it, but let me know down in the comments who you think I sound like, look like, or perhaps have a similar style of video. Two weeks ago, it was German YouTuber Shimtex, and then I got told that I sounded like Tom a week after that, and then a few days ago, I got told I sounded like Stampy. Now, I can never hear my own voice in anyone else's voice, but I find it really interesting what other people see and hear and what they pair with certain other YouTubers because sometimes once you've been told you can't unhear it and other times you just can't hear it in the first place. So let me know your thoughts on who I sound like, look like or who I remind you of down in the comments and I'd love to just scroll through and have a look what you're all saying. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. Thank you to everyone who asked the question. And if you are coming back from a future Q&A, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to see how many of you are coming back from my newer videos so far ahead in the future. It'll probably be a few months before I make another one of these. But drop a like if you'd like to see more of this Q&A style. One day we will get to live streaming and there'll be no need for a video. But until then, may the bricks be with you always.